Good morning and welcome to our Homelands Online service for this week. Uh, if you regularly tune in, it's good to see you again. If it's your first time with us online, thank you and do let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, if you're hard of hearing, do click on the CC closed caption button just at the bottom of the YouTube window to bring up the subtitles. I'm Charlie uh, and this is the first in a short three week series on the theme of prayer. Our small groups have been, have been and are still exploring Pete Gregg's uh, wonderful book and prayer course on how to pray. And we thought it would be good to revisit some of the content over the next few weeks and also to be able to provide an introduction for those who are unable to attend our small groups. We know that some of you only watch online and so we do hope that you find this introduction to how to pray useful uh, and a thought-provoking one. So why pray? Because the Bible and Jesus' example teaches us to. In Mark chapter 1, verse 35, he writes, Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Jesus prayed all the time. Before launching out in public ministry, he fasted for more than a month in the wilderness. Before choosing his 12 disciples, he prayed all night. After the exertions of feeding 5,000 people, rather than going for a quick nap, he climbed a mountain to pray. So where is your solitary place first thing in the morning for prayer? This is mine. Um, it's very difficult at the moment to get up early enough for it still to be dark, but it's always quiet and peaceful. I use an app on my phone called Lectio 365, which follows a simple mnemonic to shape our prayers. Pause, uh, rejoice, ask and yield, which spells out the word pray. Pause, rejoice, ask and yield. We'll explore with Pete Gregg in the next couple of weeks how each of these sections works, but the app, uh, Lectio 365, is grounded in the Bible with a focus on the Psalms and a meditation on a different Bible passage each day. But why? Why do it at all? For me, it's about spending time with God, talking, listening, building a relationship. We can be lost in wonder or lost in pain, and we turn to God in praise or in supplication. In our small groups, we've learned that the word prayer comes from the Latin, precarious. Life is precarious, dangerous, problematic, and in feeling insecure, we turn to God in prayer to ask for peace, for help, for whatever we need. So let's pray. Lord, we pause now and prepare ourselves for a time of prayer with you. A quiet time. Let our bodies and minds be still as we come into your presence. Psalm 46 verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. We rejoice in that knowledge, and that we have a relationship with you through prayer, a chance to talk to you and to be still and to listen. We ask you, as Jesus' disciples did, teach us to pray. We tell you now, Lord, what's on our hearts and ask you for what we need today and this week. We are thankful for the successful Jubilee celebrations last weekend and pray that many of the visitors to our church will come back to one of our weekly groups, to a Friendship Friday or to a Sunday service so that they can come to know you. Father God, we are open before you. To you we yield. You know us and we are sorry for the things that we have said, done or thought this week that aren't right. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. May the Holy Spirit be with us, not just at Pentecost, but every day and give us the strength to pray and to act in ways that please you. Amen. Amen. In a few minutes, Pete Gregg and Poppy Williams will share their introduction to the 24-7 prayer course. Pete Gregg is a minister with a church in Guildford, uh, in Surrey, uh, a writer and one of the organisers of the Big Church Day Out. 
Poppy is part of the 24-7 prayer, mo prayer movement and prayer team, uh, ministering to the people and holiday makers of Ibiza. We hope you enjoy this short series on how to pray, and wherever you are in your prayer journey, you find something interesting. I know I have. And just, just before we go over to Pete and to Poppy, let's sing along to a version of the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is Jesus' response to his disciples' request to teach them to pray. And it's the foundation for the prayer course we're about to explore together. Let's sing. We sing together, Father in heaven. Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our Father in heaven, lead us now. Temptation, God deliver us from the enemy. Yours is the King. 
Hello and welcome to the first session of the Prayer Force. My name is Poppy Williams. I'm originally from Cleveland, Ohio, but these days I live and work on the Spanish island of Ibiza. I'm here today with my friend Pete Gregg. Pete's a pastor in England who kick-started a worldwide prayer movement all the way back in 1999, and it's still going strong today. He's written a whole bunch of books about prayer, including this one, How to Pray, A Simple Guide for Normal People, which really links into what we're going to be talking about during this course. All in all, he couldn't be better qualified to teach us about prayer. So Pete, here we are, the first session of the prayer course. Can you maybe give us an idea of where we're going to be headed over these next eight sessions? It's exciting, isn't it? I feel like we're at the start of a real adventure because there's nothing more exciting than really connecting and communicating mm. with the, the living God. Yeah. With my wife, Sammy, if you heard that we don't spend time together and I don't listen to her and we don't talk to each other, you might question the quality of, of, of our marriage, even yes. though we have a marriage certificate. And I think in the same way, in your relationship with God, it's not enough just to have like baptismal certificates or, or all the kind of right stuff. It really is about prayer. It's about your relationship with him through communication. So this is the heart of everything. So then basically the goal of this course is to help people grow in that relationship with God. Yeah, exactly. By the end of eight weeks, you'll be better at hearing God's voice. Uh, you'll be experiencing more of his presence. I hope you'll have processed some of your disappointments and your struggles in prayer. Um, and I think that you'll even be experiencing more miracles because you'll be learning how to unlock the power of prayer. I love that, like the idea of unlocking the power of prayer. Like I am, I'm in for that. Good, I'm glad because if I was sitting here on my own, it would be a bit weird. <laughs> yes, it would. So your, your book is called How to Pray, A Simple Guide for Normal People. So is this course going to be the same? Like, is this for everybody? Yeah, it's, it, it really is. And I can't guarantee every, everybody watching this is going to be normal. <laughs> uh, but we are going to try and keep it simple. And we're going to cover a lot of, a lot of ground. I'm aware that some people watching this is going to be pretty new to Christianity. And so it is going to be accessible. And others probably have been Christians for years and years and years. But actually, there's always more uh, to learn. And the truth is that everybody prays. Mm -hmm. we, we all do. Even people yes. who don't call themselves Christians. I remember the first time I held our son, I, I prayed. And I think most people would relate to that, even non-churchgoers. The first time I saw the Northern Lights, I, I, I was just lost in wonder. I was, prayer was a... A, a, a natural response and probably most sort of, um, vulnerably when Sammy my wife was wheeled off down the hospital corridor to mm -hmm. have surgery that we didn't know if she'd survive um, you better believe I, you know I, I, I prayed and when she came back alive and um, and well I thank God and it wasn't me trying to do this religious thing it was just it, 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 to, be, to be humans, to, to, to pray. The word prayer in the Latin, the original, is precarious. And I think that's exactly right. We pray because life is precarious. Mm, yeah. and, and it's marvellous and it's wonderful. It's too big for our heads and our hearts to contain. Rabbi Abraham Heschel puts it beautifully. He says, prayer is our humble answer mm. to the inconceivable surprise of living. I, I love that. Mm, wow. I know you guys did this great little animation a few years ago that's exactly about this. It's called Why Pray? Maybe we should take a look at that. Have you ever wondered why so many people pray? Well, Albert Einstein said that there's really only two ways to live, as if nothing's a miracle or as if everything's a miracle. Either life's a fluke and we're just a bunch of highly evolved animals on a big rock lost in space or there's a creator behind creation, a, a God behind goodness. And if so, then connecting with him in prayer is pretty much the most mind-blowing thing you can do. Archaeologists keep digging stuff up that shows we've always prayed. People of many faiths pray daily. Even atheists admit to praying sometimes. Real prayer is a two-way conversation with the living God who loves and listens to the things we say. Jesus said, ask anything in my name and it'll be done. We have a chance to ask for peace, healing, help or whatever we need. 
Life matters. You matter. Your choices, thoughts, prayers and actions echo in eternity. But in case you hadn't noticed, God is pretty much invisible and not always easy to hear. There are distractions, disappointments and questions that we all share. That's why 24-7 prayer does stuff to help thousands of people in hundreds of places connect with God in new ways. People are learning to pray by just praying. And today, millions are discovering that God's real. Life's a miracle. And the most powerful thing you can ever do is to pray. So on this course, we're going to be working through the Lord's Prayer. And uh, it might make sense to take a look at that now together. Uh, this is Luke chapter 11, verses 1 to 4, where Jesus gives the Lord's Prayer. And we read verse 1. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. And when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, mm. just as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, when you pray... Say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. The one thing that the disciples explicitly asked Jesus to help them with was prayer. Lord, teach us to pray. They didn't ever say, you know, teach us to preach or teach us to plant churches or teach us to share our faith. They said teach us to pray because they could see that this was the key mm. to everything about their rabbi's ministry. And they say teach us to pray. Now, these men went on to have incredible prayer lives. They prayed over handkerchiefs and people got <laughs> healed. They right. prayed, people raised from the dead. They even prayed for their persecutors at the point of death. So, so they went on to have amazing prayer lives, but it has to begin at a moment in time where they just humbly kind of say, we, we actually need help in this area. And that's what we're doing really at the start of the prayer course. We're mm -hmm. just saying, Lord, teach us to pray over these eight sessions. Because yeah. we all find it difficult. I love the story of Teresa of Avila, who was like this big saint, this holy nun. And she once admitted that sometimes she shakes her um, hourglass to make her hour of prayer go quicker, <laughs> which I can really relate to. Yes, I can relate to that as well. Because you know, prayer is difficult, isn't it? And, and the good news of this story where Jesus gives the Lord's Prayer is that when we ask him for help, he promises to help us. Can you maybe give us an idea about how the next eight sessions are going to break down? When you say to people the word prayer, everyone has a different idea of what that actually uh, means. And that's because really there's lots of different ways of praying. Um, there isn't just one way. It's a bit like this toolbox here. There's a bunch of, a bunch of different tools, hammers and you know, screwdrivers and all stuff. And, and the thing is, obviously everyone knows every tool is there to do a different job. And if you called a handyman around and said, can you fix something? He said, well, I only know how to use a hammer, but I don't use a screwdriver. You'd think he wasn't a very good handyman. Not a good handyman Not, at all. Yeah. And, and in the same way with prayer, why limit yourself? There's a whole range. The, the Lord's Prayer is a bit like a toolbox. And we're going to go through those different tools together on this course. So first of all, you've got our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. So that means next session we're going to be looking at adoration, the hallowing of God's name. And then there's your kingdom come, your will be done. That's intercession. Mm -hmm. And then it's give us this day our daily bread. Well, that's a number of things. Firstly, that's petition. Petition is asking God for our own needs. Intercession is asking God for other people's needs. Okay. But daily bread is also about listening to God because his word is spiritual as well as physical. So we're going to think um, about listening and about unanswered prayer as well because we all have disappointments and struggles and we need to be honest about those. Uh, we're going to look at contemplative prayer. And then there's deliver us from the evil one. Well, that's kind of to do with spiritual warfare. So we're going to look at all sorts of different tools, different types of prayer. And online on the Prayer Course website, we've got a tool shed where there's just lots of practical 
little articles on different types of prayer, like how to keep a journal or how to go on a pilgrimage or how to fast. And, and, and so um, as well as these videos and the discussions in groups, you can go there and get lots of tips on how to use all the different tools. Oh, wow, that, that sounds so amazing. Um, tell me though, like, what would you say to the person that's out there right now? They're watching, they've just gotten started with all of this, and in their minds they're thinking, I just thought prayer was prayer. And you guys are using all these big words like adoration or intercession. Right. Yeah, the, the best bit of advice I ever got about prayer was keep it simple, keep it real, and keep it up. I like that. Keep it simple, keep it real, keep it up. Yeah, your prayer life really is at its best when it's at its simplest. I always tell the story about, um, I was walking down the street near where I used to live one day and God spoke to me. Um, it wasn't an audible voice, but it was, it was just this really strong impression sort of out of nowhere that I've learned to recognize can often be the voice of God. And, and, the, and the impression was random. It was, look at that tree. And so I, I froze and I stared at this tree in the street. <laughs> And it looked like some idiot, really, and people walking past thinking I'm having some kind of episode. And I'm thinking, what, you know, is this like going to be my burning bush like moment? You're waiting for something to happen. Right, you know, the tree's <laughs> going to fall over, I'm going to save someone or whatever. <laughs> and, and eventually it's getting embarrassing. So I say, okay, God, what happens now? I'm looking at the tree. And I sensed it that he said, I just thought it was a great tree. <laughs> good. And, and so I'm there going, good job on the tree, Lord. And I guess he said, thanks very much. Here's the point. I know it's like the most underwhelming story of all time, but actually your prayer life is at its best when you're saying stuff like, good job on the tree, or, you know, thank you for this lovely day or whatever. Adam and Eve used to walk and talk with God in the cool of the evening every day before, this is important, before there was any sin or sickness or suffering in the world. So mm -hmm. we have to ask what, they talk to him about. Right, right. Right? Because mostly, I don't know about you, mostly what I speak to God about, if I'm not careful, is problems. It's, you know, healing or, you know, confessing sin, asking God for help with yes. problems. It, 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 people I want to see saved. And actually, they must have just said to him things like, good job on the tree. Mm. And, and, and one day there will be no more sin or sickness or suffering in the world, but there'll be you and God. So what will you talk to him about? Right. So that's the thing. Our prayer lives really are at their best when we are simply walking and talking with God about the real stuff of, of life. So your prayer life is at its best, at its simplest. Exactly. And Jesus says that explicitly. If we read the message version of Matthew chapter 6, okay. listen to this. I really, I mean, this, this is kind of teaching that you know, is right at the heart of the prayer course. Jesus says, Matthew 6, verse 6, here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet, secluded place so that you won't be tempted to role play before God. <laughs> I love that. Exactly. Role play before God. I, I think I might have done that at times. <laughs> Just be there, he says, as simply and honestly as you can manage. And the focus will shift from you to God and you'll begin mm. to sense his grace. The world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are prayer ignorant. They're wow. full of formulas and programs and advice, peddling techniques for getting what you want from God. Don't fall for that nonsense. This is your father you're dealing with, and he knows better than you what you need. With a God like this loving you, says mm -hmm. Jesus, you can pray very simply. And then he so, goes on to give the Lord's Prayer. So Jesus is explicit. We, we should keep it simple, but also keep it real. He says, don't role play yeah. before God. Be honest. Don't pretend. And actually, I find that the Bible is way more honest often than the church mm. about the pain and the disappointments and unanswered prayer. And uh, often it, the Bible's not happy clappy, but it's deeply honest. There's a, a, a parable that Jesus told, you probably remember it, about the, the Pharisee and the tax collector who go up to the temple to pray. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And imagine Jesus telling it, there's this crowd, and there will have been Pharisees in the crowd. And then other people who probably thought they were bad at prayer, yeah. unlike you know, the big holy Pharisees. So Jesus, like in telling this story, there's a little twinkle in his eyes. He says, you know, the Pharisee prayed all the right prayers. You know, I thank you that I am not like other men. <laughs> and then you've got the tax collector 
like despised and he's like hiding in the corner like rocking backwards and forwards just saying you know I'm a sinner and then Jesus like he, he I imagine him winking at one of the Pharisees in the crowd when mm. he says he goes which of them went home heard by the father it was the tax collector so Jesus is saying be honest be real be yourself with God so yeah. we've got to keep it simple keep it real but also Jesus just says Keep it up. Don't give up praying too soon. And again, he told another parable about a widow who lost a coin. And he says explicitly in that, you must keep praying and not give up. When, when our son Danny was really little, he got to that stage where he wanted to be able to write, but he, he couldn't. Okay. And so he would scribble away on bits of paper and... Um, <laughs> And, and we would encourage him. So he would, you know, bring, he'd say, look what I've written. And you'd say, great job. It's like Shakespeare, you know. <laughs> and, but then one time he did this and then he said, dad, read it. And, uh -oh. I, 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 you know, you stare at it and think, well, obviously it's nonsense. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but what I found was I could look at his face. Mm. And as his dad, I could read his face. I knew the kind of day he had had, the weird little things that go on in his head, the way he's feeling. I could probably even see his dinner on his face. <laughs> and so I guessed at what the scribbles meant. And as I, as I read his scribbles, he was there nodding, saying, you know, good job, Dad. Good reading. Well done. And I, I said thank you, because it really was some of the best reading I'd ever done. And I do think prayer is a lot like that. We kind of obsess about getting the right words, the right techniques, but it doesn't impress God. Our Father in Heaven reads our faces, our hearts. He knows the kind of day we've had, the weird little things that go on in our head. And he interprets our, our, our prayers. And that's exactly what it actually says in Romans chapter 8, one of the, the great passages about prayer in the Bible. Mm. Starting at verse 26 of, of Romans 8. Listen to this and, and think of that image of Danny with his, his, his scribbles. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for. Do you ever feel like that? Absolutely. <laughs> we don't know what to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. So imagine mm. the next time you, you're trying to pray, you don't know if you're getting through, you don't know if you're quite articulating what's really going on. The Holy Spirit is interceding in groans yeah. for you at that moment. And he who searches our hearts. So imagine me uh, searching the heart of my son, your father in heaven. He who searches our hearts knows the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. So that's mm. just a beautiful description of, of it's not about the scribbles. It's about the heart. I love that. It's just so reassuring, right? That, that the Holy Spirit is doing that when we don't know what to say. He's interceding for us. So then just to kind of recap what we've talked about, you said that we just need to ask Jesus to teach us to pray. Yeah, Lord, teach us to pray. And we learned that prayer is kind of like this toolbox here. There's a lot of different types, and we're going to be learning about a whole bunch of them. Right. And then your number one piece of advice was to keep it simple, keep it real, and keep it up. Exactly. Very good. Well, why don't we pray? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, would you please teach us Teach us to pray. Thank you that we don't have to get it all right all the time, that we just need to uh, present our hearts to the Father, just like Pete's son Danny with his drawings. Holy Spirit, uh, there are so many times when we don't know what to say. Would you please help each one of us to grow closer to you and deeper in prayer over the coming weeks? So, great advice from Pete and Poppy. Keep it simple, keep it real, keep it up. In Pete's book, How to Pray, he writes about 10 heroes of prayer. One of those is Corrie Ten Boom, who was sent to Ravensbrück concentration camp during World War II with her sister Betsy. She lived in almost continual conversa conversation with God, 
asking and trusting him for everything. She found God's purpose in even the most horrific conditions. When transferred to a dormitory infested with fleas, she noticed that the guards would no longer come into the dormitory, into their quarters, which allowed Corrie and her sister to minister and to pray uh, with the other prisoners, undisturbed. Corrie Ten Boom asked us, asked us the question, is prayer your steering wheel or your spare tyre? Is it something we turn to in emergencies or something uh, we use every day to guide, direct and steer our lives? What's your answer to that question? A real relationship with God means walking and talking with him every day, like Adam and Eve did in the Garden of Eden. Here's a song you can sing along to. The lyrics will be on the screen. What a friend we have in Jesus, which reminds us that whatever we need, however we're feeling, joy, gratitude or despair, we should take it to our God in prayer. Let's sing. If you're interested in finding out more about prayer, do visit the 24-7 prayer course website. The link is in the YouTube description. And while you're there, why not click uh, the like button uh, or subscribe to our Homelands YouTube uh, channel. For those of you who've been following the course already, the prayer course Toolshed is a really great additional resource uh, to explore. Next week, our online service will be thinking about adoration uh, and how to worship God. Until then, Cheerio!